Shalom and good morning. Thank you. I think everyone in this room has at least two things in common. The first thing we all have in common is that we all have this tiny little voice in our heads and in our guts that always tells us the truth. Some people call it a moral compass. It's that tiny voice that tells you when you're being selfish or stubborn. The second thing that I think we all have in common is that we all naturally see ourselves as the main character, the protagonist in our own stories. We all center ourselves and our perspectives and our needs in the story we write to ourselves about the world around us, the narrative arc of our own lives. Main characters are usually the protagonists. That's an English teacher word. I'm an English teacher. Protagonists are the characters in books who we root for, the ones whose feelings and needs seem more important than the minor characters around them. We each probably tend to live our lives focused on ourselves, convinced that we're right about stuff because we're the main characters, the protagonists of our own story, of our own lives. Usually, we run through our days really quickly as the protagonists. We have classes, afternoon activities, homework, we go to lunch, we make it to breakfast check-in, we try to catch a few minutes with our friends. On those days, even though we probably hear that voice, that moral compass, it's sometimes really hard to stop and listen, let alone adjust what we're doing. We're all so into getting to the next commitment, checking off the next meeting, making it to that next thing, getting to the front of the line in the servery, that we tend to not think through our actions, and regrettably, the ways in which our actions might do other people around us harm. It's when we have a real moment to stop, tune out the noise and listen to ourselves, to that little voice, to that moral compass, and trust the truth of what it says about who we actually are and what we're actually doing that we grow. That's when we notice that sometimes, like Holden Caulfield in Catcher in the Rye, or Conquo in Things Fall Apart, protagonists can be unlikable. They can treat the people around them poorly. We become the anti-hero. We have this thing where we get older, but just never wiser. It's me, hi, I'm the problem, it's me. And just as Queen Taylor says, there are times when we'll stare directly at the sun, but never in the mirror. It must be exhausting, always rooting for the anti-hero. Beginning last night at sunset, and continuing through to sunset tonight, Jews are celebrating the holiday of Yom Kippur. On Yom Kippur, we acknowledge the human tendency to become the anti-hero in our own stories. We try to become wiser. We stare at the mirror. We name all the sins we committed in the past year, and we ask forgiveness and acceptance from God for the next year. In Judaism, we call this being inscribed in the Book of Life. Yom Kippur is the holiest day of our year, and as part of this process, many Jews will fast all day long. And being inscribed in the, by God in the Book of Life is a tremendously big deal on a religious level. And I also really appreciate Yom Kippur because it helps me get in touch with my own values, with the person I want to be. It also gives me a chance to practice owning my faults in a way that feels calm, intentional, and hopeful. Yom Kippur gives Jews a chance to step back and take stock of where we've landed on this arc of life. How are we doing? Are we doing a good job? And what does that mean? In my mind, we're doing a good job at life when we add to the lives and experiences and joy and comfort of the people around us, those who have invited us into their homes, hearts, and heads. So today, I spend a lot of time thinking about, am I doing that? Am I doing a good job? Where have I stumbled in the last year? Where have I gone off track? Where did I become the anti-hero, the problem? How did I harm or disappoint the people around me? And how can I do better next year? Yom Kippur asks me to do the difficult part, the humble part, the scary part of writing my own story. It's really easy for me to think about all the many ways in which I'm amazing, which now include quoting Taylor Swift in Chapel, which some of you picked up on, thank you. It's a lot harder for me to come to terms with all the many ways in which I am flawed. It's also really easy to just say I'm sorry without saying exactly what it is you're sorry for. I often think that's not enough and that the most important part of an apology is the part where the person who apologizes understands and names what it is they're apologizing for. 
And it's really hard to say what exactly it is you're sorry for, to own your actions while asking somebody else to forgive you for them. It's a vulnerable moment. It's a moment in which you've voluntarily given up your power, your protagonist energy. It's a moment in which you're showing someone that you see yourself in your flawed moments, your anti-hero moments, in moments where somebody else's story should have taken precedence over your own. Yom Kippur gives us a chance to engage in that process well. Although today is the most serious, most somber day of the Jewish year, there's an undercurrent of joy, peace, and hope that's also important to name. We carry a joy of having time and space to immerse ourselves in our spirituality, religious and personal values, and thoughts for a day. We carry peace in having time and space to think about our actions, how they affect those around us, and how we can be better members of our community. And we are hopeful and confident that once we've come to terms with ourselves and our story arcs, and once we've apologized well, God will always accept us and help us move forward as more full, whole, and correct people. And that's really comforting to know that your community will accept you, even though you've done wrong, and even if it was on purpose. There's a forgiveness there, a safety net, a recognition that we're not perfect. There's space for our individual humanity and mistakes and missteps that, I think, allows us all to forgive each other better, to see each other and each other's better angels, to see each other's potential, and to give each other grace when our story arcs careen off each other in ways that harm. I always leave Yom Kippur with the feeling of peace, humility, and love for myself and the people around me, the imperfect humans who are just trying to get through their days and who sometimes stare directly at the sun but never in the mirror. I hope you all have a meaningful Yom Kippur. May you all be inscribed in the Book of Life. And I wish those of you who are fasting with me an easy fast. Shalom and thank you.